In the last video, we saw that the standard Christian doctrine concerning the 2300 days in the book of Daniel is false. I recommend watching that video first if you haven't already done so. In this video, we'll look at what the book of Daniel actually says about the 2300 days. In Daniel 8 verses 13 and 14, the question is asked, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And the answer to that question is, Unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. That's the King James translation. But you'll notice most of the other translations say it will be 2300 evenings and mornings, and that's the correct translation. If you go to any Bible concordance such as blueletterbible.org, you'll see that in the King James version of Daniel 8 verses 13 and 14, there are actually two Hebrew words that correspond to the translation day. The first original word is Strong's number 6153, which means evening, and the second original word is Strong's number 1242, which means morning. So the correct translation of verse 14 says unto 2,300 evenings and mornings, or until 2,300 evenings and mornings, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So that's the first point. There are two possible meanings of this verse. It's either saying there will be 2,300 full days until the sanctuary is cleansed, in which case it can also be 2,300 years, because days can also be years in Bible prophecy. Or it's saying there will be a total of 2,300 evenings and mornings, in which case the number of actual days or years would be half of 2,300, which is 1150. So it may be saying that there will be 1150 evenings and 1150 mornings, and those two possible meanings have been recognized by many biblical scholars. However, what most scholars don't realize is that we are, right now, in the midst of the Daniel prophecy concerning the daily, and Daniel says those 2300 evenings and mornings concern the daily sacrifice. In the book of Daniel, the sacrifice is mentioned in chapters 8, 9, 11, and 12. However, as we discussed in the previous video, the original Hebrew word used in chapter 9 is different from the original word used in chapters 8, 11, and 12. In chapters 8, 11, and 12, the word used is tamid, and it refers to the daily activities, but not specifically a sacrifice. In Daniel 9, the word is zabak, which can refer to a sacrifice or thank offering or the feast of Passover. But what we're looking at in this video is the 2300 evenings and mornings in Daniel 8, and the word in question is tamid, which means continuity, continually, daily, always, or perpetual. Also notice this word means continual employment, and that's our clue that this word refers not just to any daily activities, but to the daily activities that one does on a regular basis in order to survive. It's what someone does as their regular employment or job. A few hundred years ago, the tamid, or daily activities, may have been referred to as chores because most people lived off the land. And in ancient times, the tamid, or daily activities, may have included a daily sacrifice. But in modern times, with the widespread dependence on the monetary system, anyone's daily activities required for survival would be referred to as their job or position in life. The word for job didn't exist in ancient times because the monetary system didn't even exist back then. You just had your daily activities that you regularly did, such as gathering water, etc., in order to survive. That's what the timid is. It's the regular daily activities that one does in order to survive, their regular job or chores. In ancient times, that may have involved a sacrifice, but again, that's not the definition of the timid. The reason this is important is that many people believe that in order for this to be fulfilled, there must be regular sacrifices taking place, and that's not the case. Because you can see that Tamid does not refer to a sacrifice, and even in Daniel 9, the word Zabak does not refer exclusively to a sacrifice. It also means Passover, which is a holiday that is still observed. So there's no ceasing of a sacrifice required for the fulfillment of Daniel. In Daniel 9, the Zabak can refer to the ceasing of the yearly observance of Passover, and in Daniel 8, 11, and 12, the Tamid refers to the daily activities or job that one does on a regular basis to survive. We're given very specific information about the ceasing of the Tamid in Daniel 8, 11, and 12. In Daniel 8, we're told the daily activities will be taken away by the little horn, and the 2300 evenings and mornings concern the daily activities. 
In Daniel 11, we're told the king of the north took away the daily activities and set up the abomination of desolation. And in Daniel 12, we're given an exact time period between the ceasing of the daily activities and the setting up of the abomination of desolation. And again, the King James translation is not correct. The word tamid does not mean sacrifice. So the correct translation says from the time the tamid is taken away and the abomination of desolation set up, there shall be 1,290 days. In our Daniel 11 video, we closely examine the timeline, which explains exactly when the King of the North took away the daily and exactly when the King of the North set up the abomination of desolation. The key point in Daniel 11 is that the King of the North represents different leaders over time. Within Daniel's timeline, the first daily was taken away by King Nebuchadnezzar II, the first king of the north. There were 1290 years from that time until 685 CE when the Roman Empire facilitated the setting up of the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem. The Roman Empire was the king of the north at that time, and please watch that Daniel 11 video to understand how we know the Muslim Caliphate was created by the Roman Empire and built the dome in almost the exact measurements of the classic Roman temples. So the king of the north represents both Nebuchadnezzar in 606 BC and the Roman Empire in 685 CE. So the king of the north took away the daily, then set up the abomination, and there were exactly 1290 years between those two events. So in Daniel 8, we're told the 2300 days concern the daily. It says, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily and the transgression of desolation? It shall be 2300 evenings and mornings. But notice it doesn't say the 2300 days start at the taking away of the daily. It just says they concern the daily. However, Daniel 12 says the 1290 days start at the taking away of the daily. We know the daily was taken away in 606 BC, and that is clarified in both chapter 11 and 12. So the first possible time frame for the 2300 evenings and mornings would start at Nebuchadnezzar in 606 BC. And again, there are two possible time frames mentioned. It either refers to 2300 days or years, or it refers to 1150 days or years. 2300 years from 606 BC would end in 1694 CE, and I did not find any significant cleansing of a sanctuary in that year. But 1150 years after 606 BC ends in 544 CE, and there was a significant event that year that is relevant to Daniel chapter 11. In our Daniel 11 examination, we found that the king of the north became Attila the Hun around 434 CE. His invasion of Italy from the north allowed the Vandals to invade Italy from the south with the help of the Moorish tribes in northern Africa. This revolt was successful for a short period in history and specifically 544 CE marks the second Moorish uprising against the Roman Empire. So 1150 years from 606 BC lands in 544 CE when the Moorish territory was cleansed of the Romans for a short time. And that's exactly what Daniel 8, 11, and 12 say about the 1150 year period. How long shall be the vision concerning the daily and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? It shall be for 2300 evenings and mornings, which is equal to either 2300 total days or years or 1150 total days or years. 1150 years from the taking away of the daily in 606 BC lands in 544 CE when northern Africa was briefly cleansed of the Roman Empire. And also, what no one else seems to understand is that Daniel 11 specifically calls attention to northern Africa and specifically the land of the Moors. This is extremely important because it explains who the afflicted represent later. The Daniel 11 timeline highlights the lineage from Cleopatra in Egypt to northern Africa and Mauritania, the land of the Moors, which later in the 1400s was, according to some sources, the beginning of the slave trade, which in 1619 took the African tribes to North America which does appear to be the start of the 400-year affliction when the Israelites were taken by ships to the place the Bible calls spiritual Egypt. So the 1150-year period between the taking away of the daily by the king of Babylon in 606 BC to the brief cleansing of the sanctuary in 544 CE by the Moorish tribes is significant because the Moors are highlighted again and again by the book of Daniel and the Old Testament. So that appears to be the first fulfillment of the 2300 evenings and mornings that concerned the daily and ended with a cleansing of a sanctuary. But another point most scholars are not aware of is that the taking away of the daily happened in recent times as well. 
There's far more to this than just what is written in the book of Daniel, as we've discussed before. The main other event associated with the 1290-day or year period is the celestial sign described in Revelation chapter 12, which we discussed in a previous video. The sign itself occurred in 686 CE during the building of the Dome of the Rock at the end of the 1290-year period, and we know that fits perfectly within the biblical timeline. But the sign also occurred in the year 2012, just one month after the recent fulfillments of the 1290 and 1335 day periods. We discussed this in a previous video as well, the partial fulfillments of Daniel 9 and Daniel 12 from 2009 to 2012. Obama appears to be the man called Messiah in Daniel 9, which makes perfect sense since that's what he was called by the media, but also because he is of African descent taking the prominent position in the United States at the end of the 400 years of affliction. The daily in this case represents the position itself and the taking away of the daily was the taking of the oath. The word translated as taken away in Daniel 12 literally means depose, and depose can mean to take an oath. So Daniel 12.11 can literally be translated as saying, From the time the position shall be taken oath, and the idol of terror set up, there shall be 1290 days. The position was taken oath on January 20, 2009, and the steel beam that Obama signed was literally set up exactly 1290 days after that on August 2, 2012. The 1335th day was the day the blessed were longing for and reaching for, the Feast of Trumpets on the Standard Calendar in September 2012, and the celestial sign described in Revelation 12 occurred a month after that in October 2012 on the true Feast of Trumpets. By the way, the Jewish calendar finally caught up to the true calendar this year in 2016, but the true calendar was already in effect in 2012, they just weren't following it, they were following their own methods, not what the Bible says, so they missed the sign in 2012 for that reason, among many other reasons. But because the fulfillments have recently happened again, including the 7 and 62 Shabuah, the confirming of the covenant, and what appears to be the very important seven-year period of Daniel, along with the fulfillments of Daniel 12 with the 1290 and 1335 days, we know that if the text was truly pointing to these events, then the 2300 days should also be present. Again, Daniel 8 says the 2300 evenings and mornings concern the daily and the transgression of desolation. So in the context of the recent fulfillments, the daily is the job or position, which in this case represents the position of the President of the United States. So Daniel seems to be telling us that the 2300 days concern the presidency of the United States and the transgression of desolation. The second part of this verse tells us the 2300 days will end at the cleansing of the sanctuary. The original Hebrew word translated as sanctuary in Daniel 8 is Strong's number 6944, which also means hallowed thing. This is the same word used in Daniel 9, and because we've already seen most of the fulfillments of Daniel 9, we can already see that the hallowed thing appears to refer to the One World Trade Center, since the abomination of desolation, or idol of terror, was placed there exactly 1290 days after the daily, or position, was taken oath. The One World Trade Center is the hallowed thing to the beast, the United Nations, which is also headquartered in New York City on international territory, just like they did with Israel in 1920. So if the hallowed thing is the One World Trade Center, then Daniel 8 may be telling us that at the end of 2300 evenings and mornings, the One World Trade Center will be cleansed, or it may be telling us New York City will be cleansed, or it could refer to the whole United States or all of North America. There's also the possibility that it refers to the cleansing of the whole world, since we know we're currently in the third and final watch on Jesus' timeline. Daniel 8 doesn't tell us specifically what this cleansing involves, but Daniel 9 gives us a clue in verse 26 that the people of the prince that shall come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. In other words, they will destroy the city and the hallowed thing, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. This flood ties into the millstone that we're told will hit the Sea of Babylon, which appears to refer to the Atlantic Ocean. The flood, therefore, may refer to the corresponding tidal wave caused by the impact in the sea. We're told this millstone will hit at the end of the 1260 years in the midst of the seven-year period in Daniel 9, and it starts the final three and a half years of trouble and darkness. Again, we're told the 2300 evenings and mornings concern the job or position that took oath at the start of the 1290-day period. 
That means the 2300 days concern the presidency of the United States, and they end at the cleansing of the hallowed thing. The hallowed thing, we're told, will be destroyed in the midst of the week. So whether that cleansing refers to the destruction or the end of the destruction three and a half years later remains to be seen. But 2300 evenings and mornings can mean, in this case, one of two things, either literally 2300 days, which is equal to roughly six years, or 1150 days, which is equal to roughly three years. This means the transgression of desolation may start at the beginning of the final three-and-a-half-year period when the millstone hits, or it may have already started. The 2300 days concern the position of the presidency and will end at the cleansing of the hallowed thing. They do not appear to have started at the taking of the oath on January 20, 2009. A full 2300 days from that date ended in May of 2015, and that does not appear to have been the fulfillment. However, it may also refer to the second taking of the oath, which was on January 20, 2013, in which case the end of 2300 days would occur on May 9, 2019. Interestingly, May 2019 is exactly 400 years from the time the first Moors were taken captive by the Portuguese and shipped across the Atlantic as prisoners of war in May 1619. Another possibility would be 1150 days from the inauguration of January 2013. That would end on March 15, 2016, one month from now. Still another possibility is that the 2300 evenings and mornings refer to the position of the presidency that will be elected in November 2016. Daniel 9 does say that the prince that shall come will destroy the city and hallowed thing, which may refer to the leader who takes office after the man called Messiah. In other words, the next president of the United States. That oath will not be taken until January 2017, and the first possible end of 2300 evenings and mornings from that date will occur in the year 2020, 1150 days from January 20th, 2017 until March 15th, 2020, or 2300 days ending in May of 2023. Anything beyond that would not match what we're told in Bible prophecy, because the end of sins, as Gabriel said, at this point appears to refer to the year 2024. So there was already a fulfillment of 2300 evenings and mornings in the form of 1150 years from the taking away of the daily in 606 BC to the Moorish revolt against the Roman Empire in 544 CE. By the way, this was just one generation prior to the creation of Islam by the Roman Empire. So today, you'll see people trying to claim the original Moorish people were Muslim, and that is false. Islam was created by the Pope in the 5th century shortly after the Moorish Revolt, and the creation of Islam was an elaborate plan to conquer the Persian Empire that basically succeeded. So Muslim does not equal Moorish. Muslim equals Roman Empire, the original enemy of the Moors and many other tribes. The Bible tells us the United Nations is the refurbished Roman Empire, and you can see how even today they are attempting to conquer the Americas and other continents by using the ancient Moorish tribes, their ancient enemy, against themselves and doing the same thing to other tribes and individuals who never did and still do not worship the beast. So the first fulfillment of the 2300 evenings and mornings occurred in 544 CE, and the next possibilities are March 2016, May 2019, March 2020, or May 2023. For more information, you can watch the playlist link below this video on YouTube called Bible's Countdown to the Meteorite. Thank you to everyone who is and has supported this work. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you next week.